Welcome back to the shop. All right, so if you followed along with uh, followed along, excuse me, with any of the 65 El Camino stuff, you'll know that we put a tubular uh, front control arms on it. Uh, they were, you know, the Amazon specials, and they were a little goofy the way they mounted. And they, when you go around turns in this thing, it would uh, lean the rotor in and touch the bottom of the lower control arm right where the ball joint mounts and I made a video of going back and grinding out uh, the driver's side because it was touching the rotor so bad like in a parking lot situation um, you turn the wheel sharp and it would it lean the wheels over because there's no sway bar on it and it would flex everything enough to where it would dig into the rotor well um, we kind of did a repair on that and made things where they wouldn't touch clearance it a little bit and then I went on sick week with it. And uh, I probably put, I don't know, maybe 3,000 miles or so on it, 4,000 since then, since February, uh, maybe more. I mean, I drive it all the time. Uh, let's just say 5,000 miles uh, since February. This is in a May 2022. Brakes are squealing like crazy and they're driving me nuts. Uh, I can't stand squeaking brakes. So um, we're going to go ahead and get rid of those rotors that we originally used. We're not going to do anything fancy uh, other than put drilled and slotted rotors on. I ordered a set from Speedway. Um, they came in, unfortunately, they came in like this with a, the studs sticking out of the box. Um, but it doesn't look like it's damaged anything. Uh, hopefully I hadn't mushroomed the ends. It doesn't look like it. I, that one's a boogered up just a little bit So I may take a thread file and just straighten it that back out. Other than that everything looks good. They're just the standard 11 inch rotor GM rotor basically it's the same rotor off the front of a I look it up for a 72 Camaro uh, for the rotors and pads, so We're gonna get the uh, the rotors that are on it are solid um the brakes actually work really well they um they just squeak and it's like i said it's put a groove in the inside rotor i believe it's causing the pad to wear funny and i also went with a, a ceramic pad um i just run an o'reilly's brake best ceramic i put that on a lot of my customers cars when they request brakes they stop really good they never i've never had one come back squeaking um and they don't black dust as bad the ceramic pads don't black dust nearly as bad so they don't dirty the wheels as bad as uh, the ceramics at all so the hotter the ceramics get the better they stop so it's a it's a real good compound for brake pads that I found I like them um, maybe one day we'll go with some fancy lightweight race brakes racing drag race brakes on the front but this um, as far as we go right now we're just gonna go with with these It's a pretty good price from Speedway. I think I paid, uh, I think, well, it's 116 bucks. Then you got tax and advertise or uh, tax and shipping. So I think it was 168 bucks or something like that delivered to the house uh, for two rotors. It's not terrible. Uh, I couldn't find them local, so I had to had to get them from somewhere. I had to go and pay shipping one way or the other. So. I like to do um, some business with Speedway. They, they usually have what I need. I mean, I do other business with other uh, speed shops too, but um, lately they've, they've got everything I need for this thing. So we've just been dealing with them. All right, we're gonna get this thing jacked up, get the front wheels off of it and uh, start switching these front brakes out. Hopefully, I can't tell if it's the front or the back that's squeaking, but we're gonna go ahead and do the fronts because I know I've damaged that that wrote those rotors in the front just a little bit. And um, I'm also gonna weigh these things. I'm gonna see how, how heavy they are. I zeroed the scale out. I usually keep the scale in the shop. I've used it for years for nitrous bottles. Um, I can see through the hole for the bearing slot. That, that thing is about 20 pounds, maybe 21. Stand it up this way too. I'm gonna call it 20 pounds. 
we'll, we'll see what the other ones weigh. I'm just curious if the drilled and slotted rotors are any lighter. They, they probably won't be, uh, but I'm curious just to see. The drag racer's mind's always thinking about weight reduction. <laughs> I got it up in the air. Let's get the wheels off the front. And uh, I might do a measurement test when we're done with this to see how much how much travel I have it's up travel in the front. I'm curious since we've lowered it uh, and put the coilovers on it. All right, as you can see how thick the pads are, so we definitely don't don't need pads. Um, but since they're squealing, it's, it's my main concern. And uh, I'll show you the rotor when I pop it off on the groove on the back. If you haven't watched any of the other videos on this car, um, you should go back and check it out. We did the control arms tubular. They're dirty right now because I, I, I daily drive this thing. We did Viking coilovers and... Um, Convert it to disc brakes. Of course, it was drum brakes when I got it. So, all right, we'll get this stuff popped off and see what that rotor looks like on the other side. Gotta pull these caliper pins out. All right, what I like to do is take a flat head and I'll stick it in the caliper like that and that'll allow me to push the caliper out, which pushes the piston in. Some people use um, big C-clamps. You can do that as well. I'll push the fluid back up in the cylinder. Usually this trick works pretty good. Some cars it doesn't work so well on. You don't have a whole lot of, to go because these pads are still brand new looking. It's a shame that they're squealing. We'll set the caliper down. You can see the, how the pads reacting on the inside because of that groove. <laughs> it's wearing nice and even. That's where I just pressed on the, with a screwdriver. So. It's a shame because these pads are still brand new, but it is what it is. They're squealing and driving me nuts. All right, we'll go ahead and pop the center cap off the dust cover for our bearings. And I'll get some needle nose, straighten that cotter pin out, slide it out, take that nut off, slide this rotor out of here. All right, so just take my needle nose, straighten my cotter pin up. Nut off. And you can see the grease coming out of it still because it hasn't been that long. It's only been since February since I greased these bearings. There's your groove. That groove is there because it was leaning in and touching this. And I painted all this um, after I ground it back down because I wanted to make sure it's not going to touch anymore. And it looks like it may have touched right there at one point. So we might grind this just a little bit more uh, and repaint it. But for the most part, it hadn't been touching. 
but I don't want to end up with another uh, groove like that in my rotor because I can't stand the brake squealing from it. We'll pop a seal out of here. Um, hopefully I won't need any. That's brake dust. Hopefully I won't need any new seals. Maybe I'll be able to reuse that. Let's see. Usually when I do that, I'll just take my flat blade. Let's take my flathead. Oh, that one's in there though. I may have to damage it to get it out. That bad boy is in there. Sometimes you can just do that and it'll pop right out. But I don't think it's going to happen on these. Probably have to get some inner inner batter, battering seals. Try the seal puller. Oops, well, I've damaged it now. To go to O'Reilly's and grab me some of these. I could probably reuse that, but I'm not going to. Shit. All right. Well, I'm definitely, it looks like I definitely got some water in there. Um, just a little bit of light rust looking color on my bearing there. Just wipe that off. Wipe it off and re-grease it real good. I'm not running any kind of rear dust shields or anything like that on this car. Um, it may help in a situation like that. I don't get out and drive a whole lot in the rain. And my plan is to repack these about once a year. Maybe every time I go on a long drag and drive event, I'll repack them before I leave just to make sure everything's good and greased. No sense in having a bearing go out when it's uh, something so easy to take apart and, and just re-grease. We gotta get some grease in our bearings. We got the seals around got the seals um, and I only had to go to four parts stores to get two wheel bearing seals <laughs> wheel seals crap man you can't so all right so if you run into this on a conversion like this that you have um, it takes the same wheel seal as a factory 65 on my particular conversion because I've got uh, the Speedway spindles and um, I thought since the disc, since the rotors were from a 70, like 69 through 72 Camaro, that um, the, the seals would be the same as the Camaros, but they're not. The diameter on a Camaro is a lot bigger. So, um, whoops. Where it seals right here on a Camaro, it's, it's, it's wider. So the diameter of this is two inches on a Camaro and it's a little less than two inches. It's um, like, an inch and uh, three quarters, I think, on um, on this particular one, something like that. So it's a good bit shorter or uh, smaller in diameter than than what these rotors actually go on. So it gets a little confusing when you're ordering your parts because the spindle's a 65, the rotor's a 70, or 69 through 72. Uh, <laughs> But we got it. We're gonna get it get it knocked out. All right, bearings got some grease in it. We're gonna tap us a wheel seal in here. Nice and flush. We got ample towels because man, you get wheel bearing grease on everything when you're trying to do this kind of job. <laughs> At least I do. I'm messy. Like like pig pen. All right. Wheel seals in. We've got grease. I need a new 
your tub of grease. That inner wheel, wheel bearing is kind of dirt on the dirty side. Uh, I have a whole lot of miles on this thing, so it's a little concerning. I like to throw a bunch of grease in there. I do not like a bearing going dry. Should have bought a tub of grease while I was down there. I don't know what I was thinking. Just about out. You start running down to the last, the grease starts getting dirty. I'm manually packing these bearings. I used to have a bearing packer, but I don't know what happened to it. Lost it years ago, I reckon. Alright, so I like to tighten them down as tight as I can get them. Um, sometimes, sometimes I'll tighten it down to where the bearings kind of get a little tight. This one don't seem like it's going to get tight. It likes to be tight. Gotta be able to line your cutter pin back up. Spins nice. <laughs> These caps don't want to stay in on this side. It was like that with the other rotor too. It's hydraulic in itself out. I don't think it's my cotter, man. I think it's just like the grease. I have to get another cap. Maybe that's just, there we go. No, it just keeps twisting. That is probably not going to stay in. It's bad when you pull it out by hand. All right, well, we're going to leave it like that. I'm going to spray this down with brake clean and get our pads. Trying to get any greasies off of there that I can with the brake clean so I don't contaminate my new pads. A lot of times these rotors will have packing oil on them, keep them from rusting and stuff. And you don't want that stuff getting on your brand new brake pads. All right, so we've got, we've got our new ceramics from 
the O'Reilly's. You can make fun of them all you want. But I'm telling you, the brake pass, the brake best pads from O'Reilly's are really good. It's in. I'm not gonna lie, I hate wrestling with these kind of calipers. The modern day calipers are so much easier to put on than these old ones with these pins. These slide, these huge pins, I just don't like them. Anyway, they work great though. They actually stop really good. Um, and they should stop even better with the drilled and slotted rotors because what happens, let me turn this off and I'll give you a little schooling. All right, so what happens, um, when the brakes, brake pads are compressed on either side of the rotor, uh, there's a gas that forms between the surface of the rotor and in between the pad, and it's like a cushion of gas. Um, so what the holes and the slots in the rotor are designed to do are to release that gas. So you get better clamping power, more clamping force, which this car does not need because it stops like crazy. Um, it really does. It'll throw you straight through the windshield if you hit the brakes hard. Um, even with these little skinnies on the front, these little uh, drag skinnies on the front, um, this thing stops. It, it's got a lot of back brake, um, so it really, really will, uh, if there's nobody sitting in the passenger seat, it'll throw the spare tire that's behind the passenger seat uh, up to the dash. So I think we're gonna have to do, do away with that uh, spare, plus it's just weight. Uh, we need to get rid of that for the drag strip. But uh, we're not worried about that right now because we don't have the, an engine worth of crap in it yet. Anyway, uh, so yeah, that's why you get drilled and slotted rotors to release the gases between the pad and the, and the disc surface and uh, get more clamping power, more clamping force. All right, we're going to move on to the other side. The other side is the one I've got to grind. I'll show you real quick before I put the wheels back on on this side. I've got to... I've got to grind off this area here. Let me throw my light back on. So I've got to grind off this area here. You can see where it's been touching. I've been gouging this rotor. Just like it did on the other side. These are the new pads. These are the old pads. So I'm getting a lot of noise out of this. I'm hoping this is where all my squealing's coming from. So I'm going to grind this down. I'm going to shoot some paint on it. Um, this side didn't... didn't touch as bad as the driver's side did uh i don't know why but it just didn't did the flex as bad over here it didn't seem anyway we're gonna we're gonna grind that up uh i got my condom over the spindle so i don't get any break in or any shavings from that on it and we're gonna move our new brake parts out of the way uh, throw them down here and pack those bearings stick them in that rotor grind that surface shoot some paint and be done all right so i ground that down um i think that's going to be enough clearance if not if i hear it touch i will take this stuff back apart excuse me i'll take it back apart and we'll grind some more off of it but i think that'll be enough um keep our fingers crossed that we don't run into that again all right got it cleaned up All right, so all we need, and then we take it back off. We can, if it rubs, we can see exactly where we need to grind some more. All right, so there you have it. Got the passenger side done. We'll put the wheel back on and go for a test drive. That's about 11 o'clock at night. I'm not gonna do it tonight, but uh, hopefully in the morning when I go run and get parts, uh, my brakes won't squeak anymore. <laughs> if you haven't done so, Please hit the subscribe button. Give me that thumbs up. Uh, it really helps with the algorithms and helps the channel grow. Um, there's also a like tab down there. If you want to contribute to the channel, that's awesome. Uh, we highly appreciate it. We're trying to get this car um, ready for drag drive events. This is the goal with the El Camino is um, do Rocky Mountain Race Weeks. Um, sick weeks, Midwest drags, Carolina stuff. Uh, we want to do all of them. Uh, I really do. But we gotta, we gotta go uh, 
got to go through a bunch of stuff to get there. We've got um, uh, we've got a I need some engine bearings and some rings for my small block, some gaskets. I need a converter. Uh, it's got a power glide in it now. Uh, my ultimate goal is to put a, a six speed in it. I uh, just don't have the funding for that right now. I barely have uh, the funding for putting the front brakes on it right now. So we are uh, we really want to get to Rocky Mountain Race Week and at the end of this month or end of next month, but uh, it does not look like it's going to happen. Um, but you know, it is what it is. We'll uh, just keep plugging along, try to make this thing better and better. Uh, I think we just made it a little bit better, at, le at least a little bit less annoying to drive. I hate squeaking brakes. I know I've said it a hundred times, but um, I still have to get uh, some 15 by 10 wheels for the back. I've got to have uh, some spacers cut down and made so I can run lug nuts on uh, torque thrust. Uh, and a 10 inch wide back there with a 5.8 wheel stud for the new um, 9 inch that we've got for it. Uh, we've got the Fab 9, which is covered in pollen right now, in the, in the center section. It's the 370 gear. So we're going to run a 370 gear for now. I've got a backboned, uh, fully braced Fab 9 from Quick Performance. Uh, that's the drive shaft for the Trans Am here. And. Um, that's another thing I'll have to have made. I have to have a drive shaft made. I gotta get a roll cage in this thing. Um, I've got so much to do. I've gotta do rear. When we do the rear end, I was hoping to do uh, rear control arms and coilovers in the back. Um, I'm thinking about putting airbags in the back as well for like when we do the drag and drive stuff and we're gonna pull a trailer and have a load of stuff in the bed. Uh, I'd like to have some added support by some airbags so we can um, not beat up the coilovers as bad, and um, then we can deflate them or, or use them for preload if we need to. Um, airbags are great, uh, especially if you don't have a sway bar. Uh, you can preload the back end uh, with some airbags and uh, counter counteract some of that roll, but I'm definitely gonna have a sway bar in the back when I get it done. Well, I got that wheel bearing grease all over me. Uh, <laughs> so, we appreciate you guys watching, especially, you know, thanks for coming back over and over and uh, giving that thumbs up and hitting the uh, subscribe button and uh, following along on the journey of the 65. I really like this thing and it's going to be really cool. My boys uh, are really wanting to go to Rocky Mountain Race Week and I am too, but the way the fuel costs are right now, uh, me being in Georgia, it's a two day drive out. I do not trailer because I don't have a truck and trailer, so I'd be driving the whole way there and back. So you got four days of just getting there and getting back um, without running the event. So it's, uh, it's it probably cost me two thousand dollars in fuel. I'm guessing fifteen hundred at least. Uh, just just don't have it right now for that. But man, I'm, uh, guys that are going, I'm going to be oddly following along online um, and probably texting the hell out of the group that I'm in, <laughs> bugging them for updates and how's it going type stuff. But anyway, uh, we're going to wrap this one up. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Or I won't see you, but you'll see me. Peace.